Okay, welcome everyone. So my name is Roberto Regis um, with the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and welcome to our very last check-in chat for the summer on our Defining the Movement series. And there is no better way to end our series this summer with in tying everything that's been going on with Black Lives Matter, with activism, with getting involved in the community, than to connect it back to our amazing HBCU. So I am ecstatic to be here with this um, partnership right now for this video with Collabs, um, ODEI, the University Museum, and the Department of Visual Arts, uh, Visual and Performing Arts. And I'm here with the legendary Dr. Wardlaw, um, our professor extraordinaire and director of the University Museum, if I'm correct, Dr. Correct. Ward? Yes. Correct. Yes. So, <laughs> yes, please, if you'd like to introduce yourself, so hi say hi to everyone. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be a part of this um, program and really, really excited to share with you some of the wonderful history that we have about the arts here at Texas Southern. And thank you, Roberto, for this opportunity. No, definitely. Thank you. And um, this, these chat series has come about because obviously, um, there's been a huge spark with the Black Lives Matter movement, with social activism, with everything that's been going on. And unfortunately, we have been together since March as a Tiger family. So this is a great opportunity to kind of um, reconnect with beloved faculty members and really just connecting with your HBCU at a time like this. So, and I can't really start the, the discussion without having to ask um, the obvious question is, how are you doing, Dr. Wardlaw? How has everything been with everything that's been going on in the world right now? I'm doing as well as can be expected. I'm really, I'm good. I'm good. You know, I am keeping the faith and every day finding uh, a little bit of joy to hold on to. And for that, I'm grateful. And the thing, um, as you mentioned, Roberto, it's been hard because we're detached from one another. And what I miss the most is my students and the recent alumni who are so talented. And I reach out to them via email and Zoom periodically. They are creating amazing work in response to Black Lives Matter, um, which is in the tradition of the art department at Texas Southern. And I just can't wait to see some of the art, you know, that emerges um, as a kind of visual um, recognition of, of where we are. Um, certainly during the um, period when everyone was mourning the loss and celebrating the life of George Floyd um, and more murals came up in Houston, it reminded me of our own legacy of the murals here at Texas Southern. So I think our students are um, well positioned to really um, respond in very creative ways, you know, to, to what this country is experiencing. Oh, definitely. And art is such an amazing outlet and an avenue for activism in its own way. Um, it is, you know, and all of the arts, music, drama, visual art, performance pieces. I mean, we have an artist right now, Nathaniel Donay, um, who recently graduated and is at, he's working on his MFA at Yale University. And Nathaniel has put up a perform, not a performance, but an installation in, on the fence of the Contemporary Arts Museum. And he's gotten backpacks from um, middle school students in third ward and is, um, has put lights inside the backpacks. And at night, if you pass by the Contemporary Arts Museum, the lights go off, Roberto, and they are flashing in Morse code the message, Black Lives Matter. Um, Which is just, <laughs> isn't that, you know, <laughs> so amazing, so creative. And then in some of the backpacks, he has little photographs of third, fourth, and fifth ward remembrances of what our communities are all about. So it's this kind of creativity that um, I'm really excited about. Oh, I, I really am. Definitely. And it's, 
uh, for our students that um, have been so affected by everything. And just, I, I want them, especially coming from this particular chat, to discover all these different avenues of expressing themselves and their activism. And I know, Dr. Worla, you've, you, you've um, been a pillar at this university and in the community, and you know the Hannah Hall mural so well. And if you can introduce us a little bit on the murals themselves, their history, and how does that really tie into um, I guess the, the long history that we have mm -hmm. in the community of social activism, of being politically involved and community involved here in Third Ward. Absolutely. And it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous history. I, you know, I grew up on this campus because my father was the first chair of the math department at Texas mm -hmm. Southern. So I remember seeing um, Dr. Biggers as a, a young child. Um, you know, um, painting his own murals and also encouraging students um, to create murals in Hannah Hall. So um, <clears throat> when John Biggers came to Texas Southern in 1949, he had just left Hampton University. And that was where he was introduced to the art of mural painting by the great Charles White. And um, his teacher, um, Dr. Loenfeld, introduced him to the murals of Diego Rivera. And it was because of the proximity of TSU to Mexico that Dr. Biggers chose to come here. Yes, he was at Alabama State at the time. And then he had, you know, Rivera was just, you know, such an icon for him. So he, I know. That blows my mind because I've always looked at the murals and I, I know Diego Rivera's work and I didn't connect them. And Yeah, wow, yeah, that, that was one of his, his, his great sources of inspiration. And then the other was the magnificent Charles White. And he worked on a mural at Hampton University when he was a student at Hampton and was an apprentice to Charles White who did the beautiful mural, which is still there. So... When Doc came to Texas Southern, I mean, he was filled with these ideas and Hannah Hall had just been completed. Um, and he approached the second president, Dr. Samuel Nabret, about starting a mural program. And Dr. Nabret, even though he was a scientist, he was a great humanist. And um, the way that Dr. Biggers described it to him as a way for students to express their history and culture and represent aspects of um, Black traditions in Texas, you know, in the rural part of the state as well as in urban areas. And Dr. Neighbor was very, very encouraging. And because he received that encouragement and kind of a, you know, go for it, um, he began that mural program and our earliest mural, which was completed in 1949, and you can see it on the third floor, um, is one that deals with um, racism um, as represented in the period of Reconstruction when the Klan was, um, you know, d destroying communities in the South, Black communities. And it moved all the way up to what was then the present, the 50s, and the great um, possibility um, of education and educational opportunities that were expressed at that time. So these murals, um, Roberto, are such a treasure. You know, we've got over 128 murals, not only in Hannah Hall, but in... Um, the um, library, in the student center, in the Jesse Jones Business School there. The last mural that Dr. Biggers did with Harvey Johnson was completed for the new Jesse Jones Business Building. So it, it's such a legacy and we have um, projects planned to document the mural. We had a, a project that we were going to undertake this summer um, with students, HBCU students, with students from Harvard and Wellesley 
um, to come together and as young people come up with um, new ways to interpret these murals. So we're hoping that we will do that next summer. Yes. You know, hoping that the pandemic moves on, dissipates, and, you know, we can return to real exchanges with one another. Definitely. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, I know COVID kind of quashed a few yeah. things, but it's, I mean, the, hand, the murals are still there. and They are, and we, and um, they were restored um, about six years ago. We had a, um, a process to restore a number of the murals, some of which were, you know, in, um, the, the condition was not good. And we are continuing to raise funds for that. Um, conservation of the murals. One of the things that happened that I have to um, brag about is that one of our art majors, Lestarsha McGarity, um, became interested when she saw the conservation of the murals and decided to enter the field of conservation. And she has moved on um, in the field, doing workshops, worked at the National Museum of African American History and Culture, the new Smithsonian Museum. Yes. Um, and now she has finished her master's degree at the um, University of Buffalo, which has one of the high, the top conservation programs in the country. And she is a conservator at the Smithsonian National Museum of Art. and. Um, National Gallery of Art. And she's one of, I dare say, um, there are less than 10 African-American conservators in the country. And Lestarge is one of them. And it all started